loves the miraculous. Isn't that true? When we see God do a miracle in our finances, in our health, in our children, in our grandchildren, in our marriage, oh, it just warms our heart about His love, His compassion, His miracle working power. And it is the name of Jesus. Everything has to bow to that name. And today I want to pray for people who have growths and tumors and warts. I love to pray for these people. In fact, I believe I have a special anointing for this. And I was just recently in DC. I had so many people who were delivered. Jesus touched them that had long-term growths in their bodies and they disappeared. That's the name of Jesus. So I'm going to ask you if you have any kind of a growth or growths in your body, put your hand on the television and I am going to pray in the name of Jesus. And the same Jesus that did that in DC is doing it in you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I send the word into everyone who has their hand on a television set. And I thank you that the word is healing them, delivering them from growths and tumors and warts in Jesus' name. Now, I want you to check yourself. Don't say, well, I doubt it happened. Check yourself. Come on. Get your faith in Him. And you say, yeah, it's disappeared or it's smaller. I would love for you to call us and tell us. And some of you, you need to check yourself in the next hour or two because you're going to see that they've disappeared. It's taken a little process of time, but they're gone. And you can say, bye-bye, gross, bye-bye, tumors, bye-bye, warts. And we love to hear your miracle report. Today, I'm so excited because I get to teach on one of the names of God. I love the names of God. Why are they so important? Because they show His provisions for us. It is who He is. So when we see that Gideon got the name Jehovah Shalom, it, God brought him peace when he asked him to do the biggest thing he had ever done to drive out the Midianites. And God gave him peace in the process of getting ready for that great miracle. And today we say to people, Shalom, Shalom, peace, peace. Why? Because that's his provision. Jesus said, my peace, I leave you. And so we take hold of that name in the provision of what he has because the names of God are who he is, the provisions of God. But today, I want you to see Jehovah to sit canoe. You say, wow, it sounds like a gourmet food. What is it? Well, it's spelled T-S-I-D-K-E-N-U and it basically is the Lord, our righteousness. Now, you know, we try to be righteous. We try to do right things. But, you know, folks, we just wear out with it. <laughs> There's just no way I can perform righteously every second of my life. And God knew that. And when Jesus came into my heart, when Jesus came into your heart, He gave you His righteousness. And so the Bible tells us that He is our righteousness. And that is so important for us to know. You know, because I blow it, I have to repent, but I have His righteousness. And when the Father looks at me, He sees the blood of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus gives me His righteousness, the same as you. And that is so awesome for me. Now, where is the first revelation of this? And I found it in the book of Jeremiah. Now, when you look at the Old Testament, there are four major prophets, which simply means they wrote longer books. So don't get nervous. You know, we have Isaiah, we have Jeremiah, we have Ezekiel, we have Daniel. And then the rest of the prophets, who are just as important, are called minor prophets simply, simply because their books were shorter. So Jeremiah, oh, when God calls him, oh, it is a very difficult time. Because we see that Judah has turned away from God, 
turned into idolatry and they are about to go into captivity. And God calls Jeremiah and says, you know, don't say you're a child, you can't do it. I'm going to do it inside you. And so he preaches righteousness to them because the people are so idolatrous. They're into such garbage and sin. It is pitiful. And finally, God says, I'm going to take them into captivity. Now, when you read the Old Testament, we find out there are five cycles of discipline in Leviticus, and each one gets a little worse, and they are warning signs. So the first one, you know, their crops begin to fail, but if they don't repent and turn to God, then they go to the second cycle. If they still don't repent, then they go to the third cycle, the fourth cycle, but the fifth cycle is the worst because they're taken into captivity. Oh, they're taken away from their land, their families, everything, and they are made slaves. So Jeremiah is called to preach when God is taking the people into the fifth cycle of discipline. Now, if you wanted to be called, you would say, I don't want to be called to do this. And so when God calls him to this, Jeremiah asks God to make his eyes like fountains of tears that he might weep day and night. So if you would be very interested in this, if you'll go through the book of Jeremiah, you will find out over and over, he's crying. You say, why is he crying all the time? Because he asks to cry over the people. So he isn't just blasting them, condemning them. He's weeping in compassion, calling them to repentance so that it don't have to go into the fifth cycle of discipline, which is so terrible. Then we see another book that he writes called Lamentations. And it's really written to be sung and they would do it often at special days and they would sing it and kind of march together with it. And in it, we see weeping and we see the city weeping. We see the prophet weeping. We see God weeping. We see also even the possessions weeping. So it is a weeping book, not because somebody wanted to be depressed, but because God doesn't like his people to go into captivity. He doesn't want that to happen to them. And so it's very important that we see that. And of course, we have it in the book on Jehovah, in the names of God, where Jehovah to Sid Canoe is in there. And it gives you a lot of the things I'm telling you. Plus, you know, we have the CDs on this and I want you to have them because you need to know that God is not looking at your righteousness. He's looking at the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And he wants you to know that Jesus is made unto you wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And so Watch the things Jesus is made unto you. This is who Jesus is inside you. And the more you know you're the righteousness of God because of Christ Jesus, the more you act righteously. You know, right believing brings right acting, right living. So this is a very important name for us to know. And at a dark time when God reveals it. So... Jeremiah is calling the people to repentance and they're just bashing on him. In fact, they throw him into a dungeon and he sinks in the mud and it looks like he's going to die there. And some Ethiopian man, you say, are you making this up? No, 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 no. This is in the Bible. Some Ethiopian man comes and says, if we don't get him out of there, he's going to die down there. So this Ethiopian man Ebed Melek, he gets a lot of, of rags together and ties them together like ropes and drops them into the prison and they pull Jeremiah out of the prison. So he, he wept a lot over his people because the people were angry with the message. They didn't want him. But he tells Ebed Melek, you know, the people are going to go into captivity, but you will not go into captivity because of your stand of faith here. So Ebed Melech is kind of a good name in here. So here he is 
weeping over the people, again going to the king and pronouncing it. And I love this. You know, we even have a prayer cloth that has the names of God on it. And we have Jehovah to sit canoe on there. The Lord, our righteousness, because these names tell you who Jesus is inside you. And that is very important for us to know. And plus the fact, you know, we have prayed over these, that when they touch people's bodies, they will be delivered, they will be healed. You say, well, that sounds hokey. No, 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 it is not hokey. You know, if you look at Acts 19, 11, they took claws from the body of Paul, put them on the sick and the demon possessed, possessed and they were delivered. We know that people reach through and touch the hem of Jesus' garment. So we have prayed over these, that people will be healed and be delivered. But you can put it on your wall and say, this is who Jesus is inside me. He is my righteousness. And that is so important for you to know. Now, what is Jeremiah crying over? Oh, he's crying over the people because they're not repenting. And he's talking to the kings and the kings aren't repenting. They're just persecuting him, pressing him down, throwing him in prison, all kinds of hard, hard situations. And then God does something so special and all of this negative stuff, everybody being against him, Jeremiah crying all the time. God comes on the scene and reveals a special name to him for the occasion. Now, I'm going to be right back and tell you that name. But I'm telling you, you need to know that name is the name of Jesus inside you. To me, it's one of the most important names you can ever know of the provisions of Christ. And I will be right back with the name. Did you know that God has 19 names? Each of his names reveals something new and exciting about God's character that can minister specifically to your needs. In her special CD set, The Names of God, Marilyn teaches each of God's individual names and what they reveal about him. Develop a deeper intimacy with God as he reveals himself to you through his many names. This CD set can be yours for a gift of any amount. Also, for your gift of $30, we will send you both the CD set and the Names of God book. Marilyn's practical teaching on the 19 different names of God will whet your appetite to pursue fully God's love and purpose for your life. As a special offer to you for your gift of $90 or more, we will send you both the CD set and book, as well as our Names of God Afghan to help you develop a stronger relationship with Him. Let Marilyn show you how to see all of His wonderful gifts for you through each one of His names. Call or click today. a wonderful name. And it is Jehovah to sit canoe, not a gourmet food, a beautiful revelation of the Lord, our righteousness. So when, oh, Jeremiah's looking and he's seeing all the people turning into idolatry, you know, turning away from God. He knows that they're going to go into the fifth cycle of discipline. He's weeping over it and God gives him a revelation. And he says, and this is in Jeremiah 23. And of course, it's in the book. You'll love it when you read it in depth. Love it when you hear it. And then he says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness on the earth. And in his days, 
Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell safely. Now this is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteousness. Now, was that encouraging? Yeah, maybe the people aren't righteous, but there's coming the day when they will get the revelation that I'm their righteousness. And so he begins to tell them of that day. So you say, well, he's not just a preacher of doom and gloom. No, he's a preacher of the glory of God and the righteousness of God, of Christ Jesus in us. And so he had that revelation. Now, listen to this. He is the Lord, our righteousness. It didn't happen right away because they were taken into captivity. In fact, King Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon came down three times and took the people into captivity. Daniel's one of them and the three Hebrew children. And so they went into captivity. But what did the Lord say? Well, I'm tired of you. I'm sick of you. You're just a mess. All you do is fool around with stupid idols. Goodbye, Judah. But he said, at the end of 70 years, 70 years, the Lord will turn your captivity and bring you back and plant you in Judah again. So he said, who is going to do this? Not your righteousness, you've blown it, but the Lord, our righteousness, that he gives us his righteousness. What an encouragement that was to Jeremiah. Now it's interesting, the other prophets picked this up too, that it would be 70 years. You say, did they really? Oh yeah, because if you read Daniel, Daniel begins to pray and say, hey, the 70 years are up. We need to go back. Come on, God, where are you? And so you read about how he helps pray it to pass, to come to pass, because it is a promise. It is a promise. And it, it, they go back at the end of 70 years and they rebuild Jerusalem and the temple and the walls of the city. Why? Because they saw it's not our righteousness. We can't cut it. It's his righteousness. Now, I want to make this very practical to you. Sometimes I just get tired of people. Do you? You know, I was in the airport the other day, and this person is pulling their luggage right in front of me and doesn't even look. And so I stumble over it. I could have fallen and hurt myself. And I think, that stupid person, why don't they look around and look at what they're doing? And then I thought, now that's my reaction, but I have Jesus inside and he's my righteousness. And so I ask him, show me how to react. You're my righteousness. And the Lord said to me, could you thank me that you didn't stumble? You didn't stumble over it. So the man did a stupid thing, but I took care of you anyway, because I'm your righteousness. So my whole attitude changed. One time I remember I was so angry at a man who worked in our ministry. Oh, he did the most stupid things, got into all kinds of immorality and stuff. Just say yuck three times. Yuck, yuck, yuck. And, you know, I just thought, God, I, I don't want to be around him. I don't, and I had all these things. And I said, Lord, you are my righteousness. And the Lord said to me, you can stand in the gap for him instead of pointing out his gaps in your mind. Well, how can I stand in the gap for him? And the Lord showed me special things to do to help restore him to where he should be. And one of the things he told me, because he is my righteousness, and remember, right believing brings right acting. One of the things he told me was look for things to encourage him. I thought, I can't find anything. He said, yes, you can. Look at the ties he wears. He wears very nice ties. So I started looking for just some simple little things. Oh, I like your tie. Oh, I like the way you match everything. I wasn't lying and I wasn't flattering. Do you know eventually that man was totally restored, serves God today in a full-time capacity because his righteousness in me showed me how to bring restoration. And so this is very important for us to know that. 
that Jesus is made unto us wisdom. It didn't say will be. It says he is that in us. Righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Do you ever speak that? I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Romans 5, 17 is in the Bible. That's Jehovah to sit canoe. That's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And thinking of that, because the enemy will always condemn you. Well, you know, you didn't do this and look at what you did a long time ago and he will condemn you. But Romans 8, 2 says there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who, <laughs> You know, we are not to be condemned. He took our condemn condemnation and he made us his righteousness. Now, I like to memorize scripture. And so right now I'm memorizing Hebrews 11. That is so interesting to me how much it talks about how faith makes you righteous. You know, we think I got to work, but he says your faith makes you righteous. Abraham was righteous because of his faith. But not only that, when we look at Cain and Abel, Abel offered a better sacrifice and his gift made him righteous. Why? Because he offered a blood sacrifice. Cain offered the work of his hands. You say, well, but you know, he grew vegetables, so why wouldn't he offer that? But wait a minute. It said, by faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. Cain heard it too. He didn't obey it. And so I want you again, be sure, be sure you call in, you get the names of God. Because folks, actually, this can change your life. It's knowing who Jesus is inside you. And you need to get the CDs and listen to it more in depth than I have time to teach you here. And of course, you can call in for prayer at any time. And we want to pray for you. And we want to believe with you for your needs. And we want you to speak what God says about you, that Jesus is made unto you wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Do you realize Jesus is all those names? He's your peace. He's your healer. Oh my goodness. He can bring the miraculous in your life. He's your El Shaddai. He can do greater miracles than you could ever dream. Not because you deserve them because of your right acts, but your right believing makes him righteousness unto you. So I just encourage you, you know, maybe you have loved ones that are out there living some kind of a garbagey life. Call in and get prayer for them. Believe God. Someone believe God for us. And I look at Jeremiah because when I look in the New Testament, he got the greatest compliment of all. They said to Jesus, are you Jeremiah? Why? Because Jesus was so compassionate. Jesus came to be merciful and give his righteousness. And look at the people Jesus hung out with. He really hung out with the French people. I love that because he was made unto them wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Don't forget to call in today. It's very important, very important that you have these because it's not only for you, it's for your family, to believe for those around you, for people you work with, maybe for ugly neighbors or people, you know, that have done you wrong and it's hard to forgive. This will be such a boost to your life. May this day be the best day of your life. Did you know that God has 19 names? Each of his names reveals something new and exciting about God's character that can minister specifically to your needs. In her special CD set, The Names of God, Marilyn teaches each of God's individual names and what they reveal about him. Develop a deeper intimacy with God as he reveals himself to you through his many names. This CD set can be yours for a gift of any amount. Also, for your gift of $30, we will send you both the CD set and the Names of God book. Marilyn's practical teaching on the 19 different names of God will whet your appetite to pursue fully God's love and purpose for your life. As a special offer to you for your gift of $90 or more, we will send you both the CD set and book, as well as our Names of God Afghan to help you develop a stronger relationship with Him. 
Let Marilyn show you how to see all of his wonderful gifts for you through each one of his names. Call or click today. Did you ever feel like you needed a built-in repair job? You know, you say, you know, I got so many problems inside, so many problems in my head, you know, so many problems physically. Oh, if I just had something inside to help me. Well, I have such good news for you. You can have a built-in repair shop in you because Jesus Christ, when he comes into your heart, he is the hope of glory. Now you may say, well, I know about him. I know the name, but do you have him? Because I knew about him. I went to church and I heard about Jesus. I knew stories about Jesus, but I didn't know I could invite him to come into my heart and he would come in and never leave me. So when I was 16 years old, I heard a Baptist minister say, you can have Jesus in you. You can have Christ in you, the hope of glory. And he told us how to do it. And so we repented of our sins. We believe that Jesus died for us and shed his blood and arose from the dead. We invited him to come in and be Lord of our lives. And let me tell you, I was 16. I'm now 83 and a half. He has never left me. He is Christ in me, the hope of glory. He is in me, the built-in repair, and he will be the same for you. Put your hand on the screen if you've never prayed this prayer or you need just to recommit. Say, Father, I know you love me. You have a wonderful plan for my life. I repent of all my sins. I have faith in the blood of Jesus who died and arose from the dead for me. Jesus, come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. Hey, call right away and tell us about Jesus. Thank you for watching Sarah and me on YouTube. We are so glad. Oh my goodness, we're elated to get to hang out with you. Make sure you click here to subscribe today.